Hello guys, welcome to Super Slow Sam Survival, and today I'm going to be reviewing my own uh, Pelican Survival Kit. I um, got all of this survival stuff, I guess, together and put it inside one of this micro Pelican kits. They're waterproof, you can't really boil water in, but there's, you know, shock absorbers, there's, it's good kits. Um, there's even a carabiner in here, so you clip it to uh, on you, which is really important to have survival kits on you, you know, you might have it inside your pack, but when you fall out of your canoe, you might lose everything, and the only thing you're going to have is a clothes on your back. So, you want stuff on your back, I guess. It's going to be in your pockets, you know, clipped on you, which you can use this carabiner for, which is very helpful. Um, so, first thing we see on the kit, I put this little razor blade, you can gut fish with, gut fish with it. Uh, you can even tie it to a stick to make a more sturdy knife. You know, it's really good to have which one of these little things. You, you can even throw a couple in here um, if you're making it in your own kit because they don't take much room. They're really light and they're a really important tool to have. Next thing you have is a signal mirror. You know, you can get people's attention with it pretty easily if you know how to signal. I don't think I need to show you, but if you aim where you're going, you know, make sure you can get the reflection on your fingers sighted in. I'll do a video showing how to correctly use a signaling mirror later on. Um, next thing I have here is a little button compass. You know, you can find your way with it. It's not like a sighting compass or anything, but you can, if you know there's a river north of you, you can go follow the red dot, I mean needle, and um, get to that river, you know, maybe and get civilization or something. So that's really important to have a compass. Uh, next thing I have here is this little waterproof vial of matches. Now around the vial I have some blaze orange kind of marking tape. Uh, you can just tie this around a tree or bush or whatever just to make a trail so you know where you're going well not so you don't get lost. You can make your way back to your shelter or back to your fire pit or whatever. Uh, next thing you have wrapped around it is some electrical tape. It's always good to have some kind of tape um, whether it's duct tape or Electrical tape. Those are the top two because they're just strong. You know, they have a waterproof outside. You know, it's pretty good tape. And next thing you have is uh, a bunch of this nylon string. Uh, it's really strong. You know, you can't break it if you just try. It's stronger than dental floss, which is really strong. Um, and it's I have a lot of it right here, which is very important to have. I have fishing line, which you can use with the two fish hooks that are inside the kit. But if you run out of this, you have enough of this. To make up for it. Okay, and then on top of this vial, we have the striker for all the matches. We open it up, and we see we have a bunch of Coglin's matches. That's really nice to have lots of matches in. It can make lots of fires, and fire is really important. You know, cook your food, keep you warm. You know, ward off predators, whatever. It's really important to have lots of ways to start fires. Sadly, there's only one way in this kit to start a fire. So if you kind of lose all your matches, you're a bit of a tight spot, but it's still, you have lots of matches, so you can make lots of fires. Next thing I have is just another uh, razor blade. Then we have, you know, a couple dozen feet of this cord, basically. It's, you know, stronger than this stuff, but still nice and small. You can just fit right inside the kit here. Uh, it's really important to have cord and they can build shelters with. Um, do a ton of things with cord. Next important thing that I have inside this kit are a bunch of aqua tabs. Well, water purification tabs. Uh, you can purify them inside this baggie or inside the kit, I guess. It would be pretty hard to do, but you. Because it's waterproof, so you can hold water inside of it. But this baggie, you can purify the water with it. It's really important to have wire, water because the water, you know, after a couple days, you get delusional, you can't do anything. You need water to live, basically. Um, next thing I have is this light. Um, this, in night time, you can see what you're doing, you know, if there's a bug, you feel like something crawling on your arm, you can see, you know, if it's a bug or a snake or whatever. Um, you can signal people in the night pretty easily. Um, a bunch of things you can do with lights. Next thing we have in our kit is a first aid kit. I butchered up a little Ziploc baggie, and then all this stuff can fit inside of it. I have these two band-aids here, um, two alcohol prep pads for uh, Advil's in case you have a headache or you know a little bit of slight pain. This helps you fall asleep because sleep is very important in a survival situation. 
I have these two different size safety pins, a pair of tweezers, in case you have like an infected splinter, you know. It's amazing how one little splinter can take you to ho your whole body down, you know, if you get an infection or whatever. Uh, then we have this thing, you break the tip off the Q-tip, and it's, there's alcohol in here, you know, it's sterilized, just like if you run out of the prep pads. And then I put some polysporin on this other Q-tip, and that's just to prevent infections, and just clean your kind of cuts up. And then I have this large uh, darning needle, which you can use uh, the fishing line or the nylon thread. It has a very large eye, which is pretty important because you can use, even I uh, take apart the cord, which is over here, and I wonder if you can even fit the cord into it. I think you can. I haven't tried it yet. All right, yeah, you can even use a cord on the darning needle, which is really nice. You can, you know, give yourself stitches, which would not be a pleasant experience, but I made this to uh, repair your gear and just have a needle. Now we have some snare wire. Uh, there's fish hooks, like I've already told you. That's one way to get food. Um, and then the snare wire to snare food. Food is not that important in this survival situation, because it's usually pretty short term. You can last about three weeks without food. Uh, you'll be pretty grumpy, you know, being so hungry, but you'll be able to live. Uh, next thing we have is this cotton ball. You can use it in first aid, you know, to kind of tape it on with this electrical tape. And then you can also start a fire with it if there's no, like, kindling available. And the last thing inside the kit is this multi-tool. Uh, there's a little knife, a file, and scissors on the back. Be nice if there's a saw, but there's not. I'm looking for one, but I can't seem to find any that are nice and small like this. Um, that's it. Uh, stay tuned. I'm gonna have a field test later in the video uh, when I yeah try to s survive through the night. I guess it's not really surviving. It's just camping with style. I'll see you in a little bit on Super Silly Sam Survival. Hello guys, Super Silly Sam here. And today, I'm going to be staying overnight, testing out the survival kit that I made for my dad. It's going to be his Father's Day present, and I want to make sure that it works. So whenever you're in a survival situation, the first thing you want to do is assess everything. So first of all, you want to assess yourself, see if you have any cuts or bruises or scrapes, see if you're injured or not. Then you want to see what's on you. So I'm going to check in my pockets. I have a little pocket knife two quarters and some lozenges. Now, next thing, I look at my little backpack I have on me. I have this survival kit, which I'll be reviewing in a future video. I have a little space blanket. Uh, orange garbage bag. My camera. And the shell. Also, my clothes as well, obviously. Um, I'm building a shelter right there, and I'm pretty close to a puddle of water that I'll be able to purify with the tablets in this kit. I'll check in with you once my shelter's about halfway done. See you in a little bit. Well, I've finished my shelter. I got a little carried away. I didn't stop to video when I was halfway through, but anyways, I found this styrofoam block. I must have been blown away from a pile or something. Um, I'm using that as my bed. It's a little small. I have to curl up on it, but it's styrofoam is a really good insulator, and it'll keep me off uh, the ground and off the bugs, and in case there's any beetles or something that I don't want crawling in my pants. I use the garbage bag that I was talking about earlier. It's kind of my door slash kind of oh, a wall here. So you can get out of as well through the door. And I've covered the back, made kind of the lean to, and then covered it with a bunch of grass. And that should keep the wind and rain at least a little subdued so I'm not soaked or freezing. I'm just about to start getting to clear this area to make a fire pit. And I'll see you in a little bit when I'm showing you how I'm making my fire. I've made my little kindling pile. I'm just getting my matches here from the kit. Um, I've made, I have a cotton ball in the middle. It's also from the kit. And I've just, you know, piled really small sticks and then, you know, dry grass on top. Just the traditional little teepee thing. Got some firewood. 
And let's just see how it lights up. Here we go. That's not the twigs. See, lots of people, when you get caught in a survival situation, um, they often think food first. And that's dumb. Because you can go three weeks without food. Your body will consume itself until you die. It's kind of cool that way, but kind of scary. But anyways, and then other people think that they need water first. It's going to last three days without water, but after that, you get so dehydrated that you die. But the real truth of it is that you need to shelter first because you can die of hypothermia in less than an hour. You can go without water for more than an hour. So always build a shelter first. That'll get the wind rained off you, which is the thing that's going to cool you down the most. And then make a fire to keep you warm. And if you're in like a blizzard or something, and you know how to do it, you can try to build a fire in your shelter even. That's a little more dangerous, but if it's a life or death situation, unlike me, you can do that. You have to be really careful that you don't burn down your shelter. I know. Get back to you in a little bit. I'm purifying some water now because it's getting pretty thirsty, but I have a long wait because it's pretty dirty. Got a couple water purification tablets in the little baggie to patch it up, but it's still working. And I'll check in with you in a little bit. Well, I didn't last the night, but I the kit worked great. I uh, I started a fire, you know, I had a fire throughout the night. I just couldn't fall asleep, it was weird, you know. Uh, my styrofoam block wasn't that comfy, I guess. Uh, kind of a baby, I guess. But, um, anyway, so the kit worked. That was all I was testing. You know, I purified water. I uh, cooked some thistle root, I guess. Had some supper. Uh, yeah, I had a pretty good go. You know, if it was a survival situation, I could have, you know, lasted. And that's really what I was testing. And, yep, I give... This kit that I made, uh, the Super Silly Sam Survival Stamp of Approval. See you next time on Super Silly Sam Survival.